Hi guys, this video is going to be, you guessed it, a little bit about bits. There are a lot of misconceptions in the horse world about what bits do, how they work, what they're used for, or what you might use uh, for your horse. People have said go bitless, you know, because you don't hurt the horse. Some people have said go with a snaffle bit because they are gentle. Honestly, guys, I have seen horses with broken jaws in a snaffle. I have seen horses with broken jaws and noses in hackmores or bitless bridles. Just because it's marketed as gentle does not mean that it doesn't cause harm or pain to the horse. So that said, I'm going to go ahead and dive in. There's only really five different classifications of bits, and I have them all, again, right here for you. So, I'm just going to go right into this. This is a snaffle bit. A snaffle bit is a mouthpiece, which here's the mouthpiece, on a ring. It can be a D-ring, it can be an O-ring, it can be a loose ring, whatever ring, doesn't matter. Mouthpiece on a ring. That's what a snaffle bit is. A snaffle bit is also a non-leverage bit. Basically, that means if I were to pull on the rings, like my reins would do, I just go ahead and pull on that. You can see it pull in my hand, but nothing happens to the chin strap right down here. Um, I put a chin strap on my snaffles, even though they're not a leverage bit, just for the fact that sometimes with some horses. Um, if they have learned that they can lean on the bit, which will really push into it hard sometimes, or they'll get into a bad habit, sometimes if you want to try and pull that ring or pull their nose to the side, they'll open their mouth and that bit will pull right through. And you do not want to do that. Yes, you want to be able to get their attention and get them stopped and pull them in a circle if you need to, but you don't want that bit sliding through their mouth. That is cruel and, yeah, just don't do it ever, please. So, that's a snaffle bit, non-leverage bit, mouthpiece on a ring. Next, we have a Tom Thumb bit. Good old Tom Thumbs. They are one of the most versatile, complex bits, I think, in my opinion. Um, they are a broken mouthpiece. As you can tell, this is a broken mouthpiece on a shank. So, here's the shank, guys. Some people have claimed, or if you'll notice online when you go try and look at buying snaffle bits, that they will call this bit a snaffle bit, which is right here. You can tell they don't look anything alike. Now they will sometimes call this bit a snaffle bit because it's got a snaffle or classic snaffle type mouth, which is a broken jointed mouthpiece, like most snaffles are just like this one, as you can tell. If I were to just put the mouthpieces together, you would not really be able to tell which bit it was till you looked at the cheeks. But here are the cheeks, guys. Or the shanks, either one you want to call it. Um, this bit is a leverage bit. So, if my horse's mouth is on that mouthpiece, and I pull on the reins, watch what happens to this chin strap, guys. If I pull on my reins, that chin strap comes up and makes connection with my wrist. That is the leverage action. Um, you don't see that with your snaffles. The snaffles non-leverage. This bit, because it's got shanks, is definitely a leverage. I'm going to go on to this one because this is also a Tom Thumb bit broken mouthpiece on shanks. I picked this up. I love this bit because I can do a lot with it. Um, one of the features that I do enjoy is the fact that I can put my reins right here on what they call on the snaffle. Because if I pull on this part, it's just as if I'm pulling on the snaffle ring. But if I pull on my rein down here, then it becomes a leverage bit. So you can see the difference there. Okay, Whew. I've been working all day, so I've got, I'm out of breath still. Um, 
One of the things that's really cool about this is not only can I get the shank to swivel this way, but the mouthpiece also has a swivel. Um, some people may say that this bit is more severe because it has a lot more moving parts. It does have a lot of moving parts. Some horses cannot handle that because it's too much distraction for them. Me, on the other hand, if I am trying to work with a horse to say, my horse's shoulder on this side is locked up, I can actually pick up my rein, twist the bit, and help move them over while keeping this side of the horse's face still. So I can just only use one side of my horse's face at a time versus with this tom thumb, if I pull on one side of the bit, you can tell this side also wiggles. So it doesn't have that much freedom on the sides like this one has. So to keep that in perspective, you can use something like this with a very short shank. If a horse is really leaning hard on a snaffle, you can use something with a little bit of shank. And um, again, you can get a little bit of that twist to help move a horse's shoulder over, especially if you're working on things like side passing or uh, rollbacks, spins, things like that. A bit like this is wonderful for helping to train those specific horses. So again, recap. Snaffle bits or a mouthpiece on a ring. Tom thumbs, broken mouthpiece on a shank. Now we're going on to gag bits. Gags, you're not really gagging anything. But <laughs> a gag bit has a mouthpiece that slides on the shank, like this one does. Again, it is a leverage bit. So if my horse is holding the bit in his mouth, get that chin strap right, and I pull my shanks, that chin strap, you can tell, makes connection with my wrist. Now what's awesome about it is if I do pull on that shank, the mouthpiece slides on the shank. It's an up and down. So that is the classification for a gag bit. Is the, is the mouthpiece moves up and down on the shank, just like this. Now we go on to the curb bits. Curb bits, oh wait, <laughs> I might add, if you have fast hands, this is a little bit more forgiving than anything else. Because it gives a horse a heads up, something's about ready to happen before it really engages much. All right, now the curbs. Curb bit is a mouthpiece. It's got a little curb in it and on a shank. You can have all different kinds of curbs. Some of them look like this one, which again is just a little curb in the mouthpiece. Uh, this is a low port, which if I stick my thumb in there, you can see where this joint meets about the middle of my thumbnail, or right, right at the base of my thumbnail. That's where you can kind of gauge where your port is at. So that's a medium port, or I mean a small port. This is a medium port. You see how much more my thumb dips in there? So that's one way you can kind of gauge a little bit about your ports. This has what they call a copper roller, which is kind of obvious why. I ended up purchasing this bit because I had a horse that could not handle these Tom Thumbs over here, especially this one. It had too many moving parts and it was too busy for his mind, so he decided he wanted to chew on it instead, which you don't want that either. So I got this bit for him. He's constantly mouthy, so I thought, well, why not give him a little toy? So while he was sitting there with this bit in his mouth, you would hear this sound when he got bored. So it, it kind of kept his mind busy and he was kind of happy to just even just stand there because he had something he could play with. And again, the copper or the sweet iron, which this is a sweet iron mouthpiece, they allow a horse to salivate. Uh, if you were to pull on a bit that did not have anything like that in it, then um, sometimes the bit has a tendency to stick. And let's face it. if if you had someone in your mouth all the time, 
you would hate to have dry mouth and have them yank on something. This allows them to not have that dry mouth as much. So please get something that has copper or sweet iron or something like that in your bits. Lastly, we have your hackmores. I got this all twisted up. My goodness. Okay, the hackmore works off the nose. So this is a nose band and a chin strap. This one is also a leverage bit. This leather tie just keeps my shanks together from swiveling out too far. So basically, if I were to pull on the shanks, which the shanks are really far apart, wow, I don't know if I can get it. Basically, if I were to pull back on that, on the reins, that chin strip comes up. It's, again, you can kind of tell it's a leverage. There is no mouthpiece here. This is the chin strap. This is a nose band. That's really all there is to it. Now, just because you have a hackmore does not mean that it has to be a leverage. You can get some hackmores that are very similar to a snaffle bit, only instead of having a piece between their mouth, it's just two rings on the side of their cheeks with a nose band and a chin strap. So you can get hackmores that are not leverage. So again, this is leverage because it's got shanks. This is a leverage bit because it too has shanks. Again, another leverage, leverage, non-leverage. So these are the classifications of those bits. Mouthpiece on a ring is a snaffle. Broken mouthpiece on a shank, usually that bit is fixed on the shank so it doesn't go anywhere. So there you go, that's a tom thumb. Probably the most versatile bit ever. It doesn't matter if it's an English bit or not. As you can tell here, this is an English bit. But still, it's a broken mouthpiece on a shank. And you have your gags, which are a sliding mouthpiece on the shank. Next, you have your curbs. A curb mouthpiece on a shank. Then your hackmores. Nothing in the mouth at all. So I hope that this makes sense. Um, again, one of the great things that these bits can do is this. I don't know, you can get some that might be able to swivel in the middle. Like, uh, like this Tom Thumb does. Which again, I can demonstrate it this way. Um, and that would be even twice as well, because then if you do have a little bit of faster hands, you have the, hello, heads up, something's changing, with the ability to pick a horse's shoulder up and move them over with one side of their mouth at a time. Curbs do not have that. So these are mostly meant for doing a neck reining technique and not a direct reining. So I hope that that kind of helps. And I think that's about it. If you guys have hard hands at all, please do not ride. Please. There's no need to hurt horses. Absolutely none at all. Um, the faster your hands are, the, the harder a horse's mouth is going to be, the harder they're going to lean on you, and the more they're going to fight you. There's no need for any of that. Uh, please reference my earlier video on how to develop soft hands and a good feel for bit pressure and rain. So, um, again, I hope this helps. Oh, I, I might as well say this before I end up closing this video out. Um, the smaller the mouthpiece, the more severe it is. Um, th if you use a chain chin strap, the more severe it is. Uh, there's all different kinds of things you can do to increase severity without um, actually damaging your horse. But again, soft hands make soft horses regardless of what that you use. You don't have to cause them pain to get desired results. It's just, it's just the way it is, guys. So I hope that this makes sense so that way when you go and you 
purchase a bit online or purchase a used bit from somebody else who really doesn't know what they're talking about, um, that this this makes sense to you. Again, go through it again because you have to have repetition to figure it all out. I know it's it's been helpful for me. Snaffle, just mouthpiece on a ring, Tom Thumb, broken mouthpiece on a shank that's fixed, a gag, mouthpiece slides on the shank, curb, has a little curb in the mouthpiece on a shank, and then you have your hackmores, which is nothing in the mouth. And in closing, I'll just say that and hopefully you have happy trails and are able to work with your horses and your horses cooperate with you cause nothing makes me happier than happy horses and happy people all right have a good one guys